What's up guys? I'm Oliver from Oliver's Aquatic Garden. Today I'm going to be testing out to see if I can grow some terrestrial moss underwater in an aquarium. Let's get into it. So first off, let's give a background to terrestrial moss here. I've got three different types of species that I have on my website at the moment. Star moss, cushion moss, and fern moss. These are usually used for terrariums and vivariums due to the fact that they can't supposedly grow underwater. However, today we're gonna to be debunking that. Is it really true? Or can you actually grow these aquarium mosses underwater? So for each of these tests, I'm gonna be using moss that comes in one portion size for how much you buy at oliversaquaticgarden.com. This is one portion of each said moss. Now, in order for me to perform this experiment, I'm going to clean up these moss, rinse them down with some water, and then I'm gonna attach them to these mats right here, these knitting mesh mats. Perfect for aquarium moss, and we're gonna test out on this terrarium moss as well. See if we can put it in here and have it stay in there. Now, before I get to the process of cleaning up the mosses and putting them on the mats, let's go ahead and talk about how I'm gonna run this experiment. I'm gonna keep these mosses fully submerged in this tank back here for approximately a week to two weeks, depending on how long any signs show up of whether or not there's decay, any kind of fungus or overall death or growth of, this, of these mosses. I will also be showing a before and after of these mosses on the mats before I put them in and out of the and take them out of the tank. Now, a quick rundown of this tank. I'm running high Chihiro's WRGB2 lighting. I'm running full blast CO2, and I have a really nutrient rich substrate, which is still newly planted in this tank, which is giving off a lot of excess nutrients in the water. So enough of me talking, let's get into the point where we're actually putting moss into these tanks. Alrighty, so now I have my moss portions here, my mats right here, and some yarn. And simply, I am going to just break up these bits of these moss, mosses, and I will be just simply attach them to said mats, yarn them down, or tie them down. Then I'm going to just simply plop them in my tank and see how they do. So let me get started. Alrighty, so now that I have this moss, the fern moss, all matted up, we're gonna plop it over to the side and then we're gonna do the other two. So I actually decided to no longer use the mats for the cushion moss and the star moss. So I decided to use the individual clumps to place them in the tank in between these wedges of driftwood that I have due to the fact I could not wrap them around the mats. As you could tell, these moss clumps were full of air which made them very difficult for me to place in the water. So I had to give them a little squeeze to push the air bubbles out. After that, it made it a whole lot easier. I'm really hoping that this cushion moss takes off well underwater. It would look so cool underwater on this driftwood. It would just bring a nice light shade of green that would make the aquarium just pop. And would also go really well with the Alternanthria ricani down below. Next, I added the mat of fern moss, which I'm really hoping will take off in this tank because the texture of fern moss just, it really stands out and I think it would look just amazing underwater. Next, it was time for me to add the star moss. And as you can tell right here, I'm squishing my little nubs of star moss due to the fact that they just have so much air in them. I am extremely excited to see how this star moss does underwater as I personally think it will be able to grow underwater perfectly fine due to the fact it's such a hardy moss. I also love the fact that star moss pairs so nicely with the brown of the wood. I think it really provides that nice pop. One thing I did notice is that there is a lot of debris in the water column. Be sure you do a water change after you add your moss. It didn't take long for my snails to find the moss and they loved it. Guys, that will wrap it up for part one. Stay tuned for the following weeks to see how my mosses do underwater. I can't wait to show you guys the results. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe.